Hi folks, my name is Girish Bally, the host for Back to Basics, another Back to Basics for another week for Season 3. Today we're going to speak with Shayna Francesca, and we're going to find out the details about life design. We're going to see the differences of what life design is and what interior decorating is. And that's right, we will find out the differences between the two, or is that the same thing? Why don't we find that out at the end of the episode and trying to get to know her better, who she is, what she is, and why she is. So let's talk to her and let's let's chat with Shayna. So see you later, guys. Hi folks, thank you again for coming to Back to Basics. As I said earlier on the intro, we're going to be meeting a guest of ours and her name is Shayna and Shayna Francesca to be exactly. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Amazing person. As I said, we're talking about life design and I don't want to get into the intro all over again, but I do have to say it. Life design is the way to do it and it's just laugh it off and smile and enjoy life. And there's too much nonsense in the place of the world that we live in. So why don't we t- talk to Shana? Let's get into the call today and let's understand who she is and what she is all about. Shana, how are you? Thanks for coming to Back to Basics. I'm good, Garish. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you again for coming to Back to Basics. Uh, before we start the, the topic of uh, today, which is the life design, yeah. What does back to basic mean to you? I think there's so much that begs for our attention Mm. every minute of the day. Mm. And it's really easy for us to have to dissociate and go into autopilot just to get through the day. Mm. And to me, getting back to basics is getting to the place where we can hear our own voice. Mm. Thank you. Thank you again for answering that question. And I'm so relating to to the answer that you have given me. Uh, so thank you again for that. You know, Shana, first, when we met uh, first time, we, we were talking about life design. And I didn't know yeah. what life design is. But when you mm-hmm. explained it really nicely, which was that we don't, we create the house the way we want to, which is outdoors, which is an external, right? But yeah. who's going to go and design the internal part? And I think that's so beautiful the way you uh, defined it. Can you say it a little better than me? I think. Maybe yeah. I- yeah. Yeah. For me, life design is recognizing that we get to be the author of our own story. Mm-hmm. We get to decide the story that we want our life to tell. And I think, like I was saying, you know, what does back to basics mean to me? I think it dovetails very nicely with what I do as a life designer is just helping, empowering people to get clear on the story they want their life to tell. But we kind of have to backtrack a little before then. Mm -hmm. We have to recognize that there is nuance and there is, there's curiosity that is necessary for us to understand what's possible Mm -hmm. so that then we can craft our story from a place of endless possibility. Right. Mm, mm. Um, but, but we have to get curious first, right. And we have to, and, and I encourage people when I, when I work with my clients, I encourage them to write the story that they want their life to tell, like first rough draft, right. None of these are ever going to see the light of day, right. It's only for us. And yet we judge what we put down on the page. So I'm like, please let judgment go, get mm. curious, get fanciful, mm. write down whatever comes out right? Like I want to ride a dragon and be a CEO, like write it all down, right? Mm -hmm. Because then we can extract the feelings Mm -hmm. and the intention behind those actions. And Mm -hmm. then we can create real life scenarios where those could happen based on your current access to resources, right? Mm -hmm. But first we've got to like get clear on the story that we want our life to tell and realize we're the author. Yeah, We're the author. Thank you. Thank you again for explaining it very nicely, better than me, actually. So thank you again for that. So let let me ask you this, right? When, when there's, when there's breakups in relationships, the Mm. first thing that people they do is they cut their hair or change their makeup or Mm. eat a lot of ice cream or, 
or exercise a lot because there's just too much of anger in them, right? Uh, do you think that's more of a design for outside your body or internally that you're trying to express? I think it's both. You know, I'm not a I'm not a therapist and I'm not a psychologist, so this is just my 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 oh. perspective, right? From working with my clients, is that I think it's both. I think we're seeking to find ourselves again. Mm right in those moments because we we may have or we feel that hmm. we've lost connection with who we are hmm. and that could be for any number of reasons or maybe because we've learned new things about ourselves through and in that relationship and through and in the ending of that relationship hmm. that now we see ourselves and the world and what we want from the world in a new light and so we've changed our mind about what we want and who we are and how we want to show up in the world. And we're experimenting with that. That's right. And we're also experiencing loss, right? The loss of the keeper of our secrets, the loss of the person who keeps track of X things in our life, the partial historian, somebody who was witnessing our life with us, right? Mm -hmm. We've lost that. Um, and it's painful. And so, you know, we're, we're, I think oftentimes we're just seeking to redefine ourselves and to find, to find connection with ourselves again, and to find connection with the world again, because the mm -hmm. way that we connect with the world has now shifted because mm -hmm. the people we're connecting to the world through has mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. just my opinion. That, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank you again for that. You know, mm -hmm. around the world, obviously in the United States, the adult age is 18. OK, and I, I'm going to get to that storyline. Right. Yeah. So kids are still learning and adapting their own design of their life. Okay? Yeah. So but there's no right number, is there? Right. Because I'm close to 40, close to 50, close to 60, and I still don't know how to design my life. Mm -hmm. So we're still learning and evolving. Right. Yeah. So. So what is the right time? Or I should say, what is the right age? I don't think there is a right age. But... There's no such thing. There's so, no such thing as right or wrong. <laughs> so how do we so then how do we know that how should I design my life? Should I, I be a an awesome person or should I be a regular average person? I mean first I, first I don't I, I don't subscribe to the thing the idea that there's any such thing as a regular average person. Okay. I think the world tells us how to conform in an effort to make us all regular and average so that we fit into this very specific system that's meant to extract labor and <laughs> and is exploitative by its design. And so conformity is required. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we design our life, the way that I approach life design is from a place of intention. Mm -hmm. And I also come from a place of knowing that as we learn and grow, we change. And so our story changes and mm -hmm. it should change and it should expand and it should grow because we should expand and grow. And our understanding of the world should expand and grow and mm -hmm. our understanding of what's possible expands and grows. And so that story is always ever changing. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, you know, I know the base, the root, the root of who I am and what I want to accomplish in this world is to reconnect people with joy that I've always been clear on mm -hmm. the ways in which I do that change frequently. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, depending on what I, what I'm going through, what I'm learning, what I'm, how I'm changing in the world, but you know, some things stay consistent right? Like I've, I've always, I've been an interior designer and that's what I went to school for. But then what changed is, you know, recognizing that how I worked with my clients was so very valuable to people outside of working with them as an interior designer, that it became a separate thing. It became life design. Mm. Right. And I never expected that to happen. I expected to stay an interior designer for my entire life. But the thing that I always come back to is that I reserve the right to change my mind. And so does everyone else. We should. Mm. We should grow and change and morph. So we are designing our life every stage, right? And when we are given the space to have that autonomy, even my six-year-old niece is designing her life, right? Mm -hmm. She 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 gets to decide what she wears to school every day. And sometimes her outfits, I'm like, girl, I'm in love with this. It's polka dots and sequins and mm -hmm. glitter. And, and other days it's like cowboy boots and like I, I just the way that she plays with her imagination 
that that is engaging with our lives, letting ourselves play, get curious, mm. and just take up space in this world however the heck we want to. But That's Shana, you know, with that example that you're giving me, it seems yeah. like uh, your niece is still observing and trying to understand what's the right fit for her. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Uh, maybe. I mean, uh, or maybe she's just experimenting. And it's not about it's not about getting to what's right. It's about no. just enjoying the journey. Enjoying the journey. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's about it's enjoying the journey. It's going to be a hit and misses a along the way. Right. I mean, yeah. that's. For yeah. sure. Sometimes she probably walks out of the house and is like, you know what? This actually doesn't serve me today. <laughs> I wanted to play on the playground and these sequins are getting on my nerves, whatever, whatever it is. Sometimes it's a miss, but you know, I think it's about enjoying the journey. That's the key. That's the thing is just, is enjoying the journey, but also knowing our intention for the journey. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you again, Shana, for that. You know, uh, when you and I chatted, we, we talked about home designing and interior mm -hmm. decorating that I want yeah. a sofa this way or TV this way mm -hmm. or the color this way and mirror should be in front of the door, the front door so all the negative yeah. goes yeah. away, right? And we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Take that same similarity to your life. Can you explain that? Because you, you explained it so well. Yeah, I think when it comes to our home, we... First, we have to understand that we spend two thirds of our life inside of our home, right? Mm -hmm. And so our home, I look at our home as the stage from which we tell the story of our life, which is why now the way that I work with people is like life design mm -hmm. and then interior design, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I need them to get clear on the story that they want their life to tell. And then we're going to set the stage. We're going to use their home as the stage from which they tell the story of their life, right? Mm -hmm. And then... And then it starts to bleed into every aspect of our life. When we look at our home and we realize that it is a direct reflection of our beliefs about ourselves, we start to get clear on, and, and we're clear on the story that we want our life to tell. We start to understand how they dovetail together. And then it starts to bleed into every aspect, the way that we present ourselves in the world, the way that we carry ourselves, the way that we understand the world around us and the way that we just have confidence to be ourselves, right? Like, just bring our whole self into the moment. And I think when we start to really pay attention to energy and flow, like when we enter into our home and we're like, you know what? I, I specifically avoid this room in my house, or I specifically avoid looking at this thing in my house. That's energetically, it's pulling you by mm -hmm. avoiding looking at something, you're mm -hmm. still seeing it. <laughs> Right. Right. And so when we get clear, that's sucking our energy and we need to do something about it. And if we can't do something about it ourselves to get help doing something with it or about it, mm. you know, that's really important. And that's where community comes in, right? Mm. Forming community around ourselves and forming communities, mm. right? And, you know, I come back to, you know, Hillary Clinton said it takes a village to raise a child, but to mm. me, it takes a village, period, for all of us, mm. for every every bit of us, we're meant to live life in community together mm. um, and to help and assist one another um, and just be there for one another and witness to one another's lives. And so, you know, I think that that comes into every aspect of our life, right? Like That's right. being in our homes, the way that we entertain, the way that we connect with one another, mm. um, all of that, it all dovetails together mm. so that we have this beautiful, joyful life. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again, Shana. You know, earlier uh, in the beginning of the call, you did mention that you were a interior decorator and then you went interior into designer, interior designer. And then you just went into this life design, right? Yeah. yeah. So what was that one particular scenario that made you change over or convert over? Or if you're doing half yeah. and half, that's, that's a separate story mm -hmm. altogether. Yeah. So where, where did you come up with uh, this? this whole concept. Yeah. So, I mean, the way that we're talking, the things that we're talking about, I was talking about all of this with clients all along. Um, mm -hmm. And it was about four years ago when I started um, doing group coaching and I had extrapolated these concepts mm -hmm. that I'm talking about out mm -hmm. of my interior design work and was talking about them in group coaching. So the group coaching had nothing to do with interior design whatsoever. It was entrepreneurs and people yeah. looking to do some personal growth and personal development. Yeah. And I realized how powerful these concepts were and, you know, a hundred people in 
two and a half, over two and a half years, I was like, huh, this is some really powerful stuff. And it, and it just during that time is when I made the shift to recognize, like, I think I need to be focusing on talking mm -hmm. to people about designing their lives rather than only being able to work with a select few people as their interior designer. Right. And I still work with people as their interior designer, but my primary work is around life design. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it was funny because as I started to see and make that shift about two years ago, a client of mine was like, um, he's like the head of neuroanesthesiology at a, at a very well-known, very prestigious hospital. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he looks at me and he was like, I tell everyone that you're my interior designer and you're my life coach. And I was like, you do? Oh my God. Yay. <laughs> You know, it was like, I, but I hadn't put, I still was like hesitating to put that language together. And I was just like talking about life design, but, but really my clients are, are who helped me to kind of make that jump and recognize that like, I did have the expertise necessary to bring this, this conversation forward. And I didn't need, um, I didn't need to keep diminishing it or I didn't have anything to prove. I'd already done the work. Uh, so it was really just working with people that that made it clear for me. Well, you know, Shana, thank you, thank you again for that. But the way yeah. the way you're you are designing this whole concept of yours and speaking mm -hmm. to a lot of people, you technically don't have to label yourself. Have other people yeah. label you, right? Mm -hmm. Because then then you could be a counselor, you could be a coach, you could be yeah. anything you want. You could be a speaker for ma for that. I matter. am. I, mean, I am. I'm a public speaker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saying. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. You don't have to label yourself. I mean, I yeah. have other label you. I think that that's how I look at it. Yeah. You know, I think, I think that that is applicable sometimes, but I think especially for women, we struggle with being seen and being heard and being valid in the world. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times um, we are invalidated, mm -hmm. um, not just women, but marginalized communities in general. And so I think it's really important that we be able to define ourselves and take up space with how we choose to want to be seen in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's like a balance of seeing, understanding how people see us and letting that be present. And then also being like, no, this is who I am. Right. And I'm going to define myself and not let other people define me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shana, thank you again for answering that question and and be a sport on this whole thing. But yeah. let me let me ask you this: when when you and I were chatting and we were talking about the the Vastu and the design yep. of your house, mm -hmm. how did you take that concept? And we'll get into what that Vastu is because a lot of people they don't know what it is. They don't. I yeah. do. I do because I come from that uh, country of yeah. uh, Vastus and and yeah. uh, all the other stuff, but. Can you explain and define that if you don't mind? Yeah. So I didn't, I haven't ever like gone into, and I, I want to be clear that like I, I honor Vastu and I honor Feng Shui. Those practices take years and yeah. years of study. And I haven't done those years of study, but I am aware of both. And I became aware of both. Um, I became, I, Feng Shui has been around, you know, as far as in Western people colonizing it mm -hmm. <laughs> for <laughs> for a couple of decades now um <laughs> so i was more aware of feng shui but um a friend of mine uh Sheol, she we were talking about the way that i work and she was like have you ever looked into vastu she's like it's the most ancient study of design of interior design but of space design and understanding of spirituality and space and i was like no and so i started doing some some work into it and some look into it. and it's all about really what it all comes back to is an understanding of energy and that everything is made of energy and how we interact with space and how we are spiritually connected with space mm. and this is my interpretation right mm. um and so she was recognizing that the language i was using around interior design and life design was was so very similar and and paralleled vastu and feng shui mm -hmm. and i was just so thankful this is again it comes back to like so many times i'm talking about concepts that have come to me naturally through my observation of the world and then people are like but that's actually this thing mm -hmm. <laughs> did mm -hmm. you know that i'm like no i didn't know that thanks for telling me right mm -hmm. but but i think 
that's how connected we are spiritually to the world, right? Is that we understand in the deepest parts of ourselves, beautiful concepts about how the world actually works and how we're connected to one another and how we're connected to the world. But Mm -hmm. so much distracts us from that, that, that we're, we push it aside and we forget and we've got to stuff it away. Mm -hmm. Um, But, but things like Vastu and Feng Shui bring us back to the present moment of remembering and being clear that we every everything is a beautiful delicate ecosystem everything is in community together mm-hmm. and that we're meant to honor that relationship between us and everything around us yeah thank you thank you again Shana, for that you know let me ask you this and maybe you might not know the answer but i'll um, tell you if i don't <laughs> yeah, i mean about feng shui and about vastu right and we are talking about the design of the house and how it's supposed to be but do you actually think that originally they actually were designing individuals versus the actual house itself and the location of it? I think those things are connected, right? Like not that they were, I don't think they were designing people, but I think they were designing the connection between the person and their environment. Hmm. Right. And by getting present, inside of our own bodies and recognizing that we do have a connection to our physical environment. I think it makes us aware of how powerful we are and how powerful our environment is on us. Right. Mm-hmm. And that there's an, a connection between the two. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, I don't, I don't know that their original intent was to design people. I just pushed it into that realm for myself, mm-hmm. understanding that there's nothing is truly siloed. There's That's no right. such thing as free will. Not really. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe maybe it's just not people. Maybe it's just good vibe and bad vibe or good luck and bad luck. I don't know that there's, I mean, I, I get that. I just don't really use those terms anymore. I try, I'm trying to deprogram myself from using the terms good and bad because it's really a sliding scale between the two. Rarely do you ever find anything that is entirely one or entirely the other. It's okay. usually some kind of scale between the two. Um, and I'm trying to use the language more around is something harmful to me or, or is it beneficial to me? Right. Or to the people around me. Um, yeah, so I I don't know if it's if it's about good or bad. Yeah. Th- thank you thank you so much uh, Shana for answering that question. You know, on on season 3 we have started a a new segment uh into the show and it's a uh a rapid fire. And I'm going <laughs> to okay. ask you certain words or sentences and you tell me what is the first thing comes in your mind and then you can explain as to why. Right? Okay. Um <laughs> so let's say I say story of life. Mm. Story of life. What comes up for me is just joy, right? Like what brings us joy? Mm. Uh, Good or bad? Neither. (laughs) Gray. (laughs) Okay. Somewhere in between. so, So let me ask you a question during this rapid fire. If good or bad, what other word would you use? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I would use. I I think in any given moment, it might just be, are we living intentionally? Are we, are we living unconsciously? Mm. Are we being present? Mm. You know, are we understanding our connection to everything around us? Are we understanding what enters the room when we do? Mm. Right. And Mm. what we're bringing with us and what we're leaving behind energetically. Mm. The next question is Vastu. Orientation. Uh, Feng Shui. Energy direction. Uh, Life design. Curiosity. Shana Francesca. (laughs) Weird. (laughs) Okay. I think that was good. <laughs> so th- thank you again for, for answering those questions. You know, there's yeah. the, the new segment. It is something to think out of the box whenever yeah. we're talking about this, because I want people to understand that there are different definitions to certain words that we use, like yes. story, good, bad, vastu, uh, you know, yeah. fan choy, you know, and 
and uh, obviously you. So thank you again yeah. for, for answering that question. So before you leave today, do yeah. you have any last words to all of my Back to Basic listeners? And how yeah. was your journey on Back to Basics too on top of that? Yeah. Um, no, thank you for having me. I've loved this conversation. And I would say my parting thoughts are Curi stay cu get curious, foster curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. So much of that is, is programmed out of us as kids, but it's us getting curious mm -hmm. literally will change the world. Mm -hmm. It will change the world. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again, Chena, for, for coming on the show and, and making this brighter. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank uh, you. You know, as soon as I connected with you, I actually connected with you on the pre-call. And thank you again for supporting me on the small podcast that I have. Of course. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, guys, we spoke with Shana today and we talked about, well, we talked about a lot of different things, didn't we? And we talked about the life design how life design is important, not important, that is up to you to decide. But there's one thing that we did say, that you should design the life the way you want to design it. And it could be bad or ugly or whatever it is. So that's up to you to decide. So here's a quote of the day from Back to Basics. And the quote is, create a life that feels good on the inside, not one that just looks good on the outside. Because, you know, we do put some makeup on, which is good. But does it make you feel good? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But there is one thing that we do know on Back to Basics. Everything in life goes back to basics. And that's what we did today, guys. Guys, take care. God bless. And I will see you next time on Back to Basics. Hi, guys. Thank you again for tuning in to Back to Basics and listening to the the excellent uh, episode that we had today uh, with our guest you know with your love and support we do need you to at least rate our show review our show because it does make it stronger day by day week by week as i usually say on my episodes and there are three things in this episode that it makes a hit for me which is the content the guest and definitely the host so guys take care god bless and remember everything in life goes back to basics and that's what we did today guys guys take care god bless and see you next time on back to basics